Hello Tenos, Zelp here. Today's topic is about enemies' body parts and some common questions that people wonder about them. Despite having information already given to us on Wiki, I did some of my own testings and although Wiki is really accurate, it could somewhat be outdated sometimes. This whole research started because shut up on our Discord suggested it and it was brought to my attention that there are people that do not know about body part multipliers besides the head shot. For most enemies there is only one weak spot which is the head and the damage taken is doubled there. Of course there's also some exceptions. If you were to look at a humanoid enemy it is really easy to locate their heads. It's uh um uh, this one. In some cases, parts of an enemy could actually be there for display and it doesn't actually take damage. For example, the heavy gunner can take damage from getting hit at the foot or parts of the uh, left arm and of course the gun, although it is not technically supposed to be part of the enemy. But yeah, in case you're wondering. By the way, as a lefty, I feel very offended that the right hand gets to hold a gun and the left hand is not even worth being a target. Like, what happened to equality? Haha, <laughs> I'm just joking. The left arm is not being neglected, it is actually invincible. There are also other parts of other enemies that behave the same, but well, let's not get into that. Instead, let's talk about some infested weak spots. For ancients, they have their head at where you think it would be, on top of their body. But Wiki did mention that ancients also has a 3 time multiplier body part which is on their limbs. However, I could not seem to find it. I mean seriously, they are limbs. It should be their arms or legs. How hard could it be to find? Now I'm not too sure if they removed it or is it just me, but the thing about the back tough shell is still real. It does reduce incoming damage by half, in other words a 0.5 damage multiplier. Boilers has one of the most health among the infested and they have a relatively huge weak spot, which I guess you could consider it as the head. But what's interesting about it is that whenever that weak spot is being attacked, it will spawn a pod which then turns into one of three random enemies which are either a charger, a volatile runner, or a leaper. The bright side is that they are only level 10. So in a way, unless you can kill a boiler in one hit, aiming its weak spot is going to end up spawning more enemies. And also, whenever the boiler dies, it will spawn 3 to 5 pots as well. The Broad Mother has two weak spots. One is its head, which is a small area above the rib cage, and occasionally when it spawns maggots, it will open its rib cage and expose its second two times body part multiplier. Like the boiler, when it dies, it will also release a swarm of maggots. The maggots can be very annoying, they deal damage and slow its victims. If they attach themselves to your allies, don't bother shooting them because it will not hurt them. Instead, the victim should roll over to... Before we talk about the next infested enemy, let's look at the MOA. Vicky calls their weak spot a fanny pack, which I thought it was misleading considering that most humans wear the fanny pack at the front and the side. But for the MOA, the weak point is actually behind him, something that looks like a battery cell box looking thingy. You can actually hit it from the front if you manage to somehow shoot between the legs. The gun on the heads takes half the damage and there is no extra damage from headshots. The anti MOA and fusion MOA on the other hand do not seem to have any weak points or strong points. Now let's take a look at the infested MOA which is the Tar and Swarm Mutilus MOA. They have the same weakness as the MOA and instead of the battery looking box, it kind of looks like a tail. 
since there is a damage reduction on the top as well and of course most of the time it will be facing you it might not be a bad idea to just aim for the huge legs the last enemy that we'll be looking at is the Hyaka Master the one that summons cats simply because it is not in the list on wiki yet and by the way I'll put the wiki's list link on the description in case you guys want to check it out so it seems like she follows most of the humanoids which basically has their head as the weak spot but her head is pretty well protected and you can't get a headshot from the sides or the back okay now let's talk about the common wondered questions first does the armor from some of the greniers protect the head from getting headshots from the back the answer is yes so if I have a high punch through weapon, can I hit the head from behind or through another body part? The answer is no. The moment it touches a body part, it is registered as that body part's multiplier. Second question. If I were to use a shotgun and one of the pellets were to hit the head, will all of the pellets damage be considered as a headshot or will it be accounted for individually? The answer is that each pallet will actually be accounted for separately and deal its own unique damage. Third question, when a corpus humanoid loses its helmet, does it take extra headshot damage? The answer is no. The helmet being removed does not increase the damage. I believe it is just an animation when the enemy's shield is being completely removed with a headshot. The fourth and final question, how does the weak spot multiplier works with critical multiplier? For that, it will be covered in another future video when we talk about critical. I like to take this opportunity to talk about overpowered damage from weapons or warframe because it seems to me that there is still people who do not understand the importance of a balanced game. If you could do a ridiculous amount of damage and one hit every enemy no matter how you hit them, mechanics like this one that we just discussed will be useless. I know what you are thinking, like if you manage to reach the end game contents then the weapon will be at par with the enemy and then the mechanics will be useful again but let's be honest here, Warframe is not made for end game contents. Trying to push the game that far for your own entertainment is fine, but don't blame the developer for not providing a weapon for your playstyle. But with that said, I do think that DE should consider creating endgame contents for the veterans or something the newer players can look forward to. Making stronger weapons only for higher MR users seems fair because they would have already been through the toughness before and they need a better weapon to face what is ahead. This should provide a more balanced challenging factor. If there is end game contents, we do not necessarily need OP weapons, maybe just increase the number of players in those games. I would imagine a 8 player survival mission would last longer than a 4 player one. Of course the reward is important as well, but you know what? I'm not creative enough to give this kind of advice, instead I just want them to know that even far before I reach MR23, I have been asking myself, then what? And now that became a now what? Bottom line, Warframe is not endgame. Having OP weapons or frames or bugs just creates gods among men. I suggest making endgame contents, then maybe provide even endgame weapons to allow gods to compete among gods. Let me know what you think in the comments guys. Uh, okay, this is my time. I just want to say that this research is not hard to do. Basically, shooting different enemies at different points, checking the damage and see what happens. But God, it is so time consuming. If you appreciate what I have did here, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't for more upcoming videos. I'm actually facing a problem which is I can't seem to find the charger's weak point. According to wiki, it has a head with 2 times multiplier somewhere. Leave a comment if you know where it is and make sure you find it first instead of showing me what wiki says because I know what wiki says. I've been trying to shoot everywhere. Once again guys, this is Zelp. 
I will see you in the next video. Have a pleasant day. Bye bye. Oh, and uh, don't forget to join my Discord if you haven't. Links are in the description. Uh -huh.